What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Trapper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Lanes. Likes and locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this channel. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Uh, yeah, this is getting really, really sweaty. Every time they take Laurie Markin and out of the basketball game here in this second half, Indiana goes on a run. Now it's a 12-point game with seven minutes left. Hopefully, we can have Markin and just go completely postal here. Jordan Clarkson playing much, much better. Uh, creating a little bit, but yeah, a lot of usage going his direction because he's knocking down shots. No, he's not. Buddy healed. Buddy healed. Most shot attempts through three quarters of anybody on Indy. Unfortunately, they didn't go in the basket. Two for 13, ended up locking 13 and a half points over on X at Eric Lindquist. Hey, if you just watched the video, you probably avoided that landmine. We'll see if it ends up being a landmine if he even enters this fourth quarter because, again, nothing going down. And Buddy Heald, not really a defensive stalwart. This we know. We've got Memphis in full swing. We've got Houston playing at least good basketball here. Uh, going to beat up on the Lakers, although for DFS, that's not good. So many things that are still going on here on a 14-game slate. We'll see how it ends up panning out as the evening progresses but you got two games on tap only two games because the association has no idea how to schedule thursday just two basketball games primetime tnt viewing i believe we get the crew back the best post-game basketball crew i think it's maybe it's next week maybe i misspoke again charles barkley kevin smith can't wait to get everybody back with ernie johnson having fr uh having fun because that thing is just as good as it gets this is actually as good as it gets in the sportsbook community. If you're in one of these six states, Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Virginia, New Jersey, or Ohio, congratulations. You're going to have Bet365 in your life. And actually, I'm going to be in New Jersey for a quick second on Friday. So I'm going to be able to take advantage of Bet365 for the first time. If you're in New Jersey, take advantage of it as well. Say hi to me at the airport as I head into New York City. But anyway, Bet365, friends, really, really good stuff at those six states. Bet5, get 150 in bet credits. It says that right here. Only if you're 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Again, two games, two teams that didn't play. The only two that didn't play here on Wednesday. And two teams on a back-to-back -back that started off here. Milwaukee Indy, producer Jacob, let's get to the picks. I'm going to check in here on this indie game. Again, 12 points, uh, 12 point here still. Uh, why? We're at the 534 mark. Laurie Markkinen hasn't checked back in and they're down 12. What are you freaking doing? I, I'm beside myself. They're challenging something. Agbashi, what a weird starting lineup that we got here from the Utah Jazz, but we don't have to talk about them today. We'll talk about them Friday. Milwaukee and Indy. The Indiana Pacers, they are completely just running rampant here. 121 08, 534 here in the fourth. Offensively, they're a juggernaut. Defensively, they have some decent pieces. Miles Turner's always been a noted two way player. And I think you're going to have to really hold steady because they're 28th in adjusted defensive rating. That's kind of the one blemish we have here. But talking before the show with producer Jacob, who I think probably knows ball more than most, producer knows ball. How about that? Something like that? No? No? Okay. He just shrugged. He doesn't care. He's not listening to me. It's fine. It's fine. Keep watching your Celtics. You're good. Milwaukee, uh, three and a half point favorites going into Indy on a back-to-back -back with some high variance volatility here. You got a lot of veterans also, particularly on the Milwaukee side. Not anybody that's going to be missed in leaps and bounds here, but you got to kind of plan ahead here and looking at some of these rotations... Do you get Jay Crowder on the back-to-back? -back? Do you get Damian Lillard on the back-to-back? -back? Do you get you know, some of these other pieces? Campaign in the membrane probably could go berserk in the event that he's not out there. Pat Connaughton. They do have some vets, some pieces that, it, I don't know, Brooke Lopez is kind of the main guy that I, I kind of have starred, centered here. If he doesn't play on the back-to-back, you maybe go small here. And that's something that makes some sense against Indy that they're going to get out and run. Not a lot of size on their side outside of Miles Turner. So Jalen Smith, like a high variance guy, working out a lot better in Indy than he did in Phoenix. No doubt about that. Playing really well here on Wednesday night. But I think for me, I'm kind of just leaning. I think this is a pretty efficient spread. Three and a half, four. Not really trying to get cute with this game in particular. Now, I want to try to read the tea leaves, and this is the very important thing about talking about a two-game slate where these two are both on back-to-backs. There's going to be injury news that drops in some somehow, some way. Now, there are new rules with the NBA, talked about it repeatedly here on this program, where you don't know exactly what you're going to get. 
night in, night out. They're trying to incentivize guys to be playing more of these back-to-backs, to not rest guys in these spots. But I will say, you got to pay very close attention, I think, to the Milwaukee side, a lot more so than the Indy side, where they are playing nine guys, ten guys deep, and have the ability to go to Nemhard, who can eat up some uh, some minutes there if they don't want to push Halliburton too hard, if they want to go to Benedict Matherin in his second season. Another young piece that I think some of these guys can just go out and, and run a little bit more than the Milwaukee side, where they just seem to have a little bit more uh, miles on the tires. Miles Turner, not on the tires. Whatever, I'm very confusing today. Mainly because I don't have a whole heck of a lot here from this one. I'm going to go Indiana Moneyline for a lean, but I at least want to throw out a prop for you here too. Buddy Heald shot the ball 13 times through three quarters. He has not re-entered this basketball game since then, but you have at least got to have him on your radar because he's somebody who can get hot and then get his minutes extended. He had 16 shot attempts in 22 minutes. Two for 12 from three. He got the opportunity. He got up to 10 points. We'll see. If we get down to the foul situation here, it's a 10-point game inside of five minutes. You could see Buddy Heald still eclipse that 13 and a half number. Now, he's going to be somewhere in that ballpark again tomorrow. Maybe 12 and a half. Maybe 13 and a half. Going to be waiting to see where this number opens because I will have a lot of interest. But a guy who, yeah, there's going to be some high variance in that, that shooting volatility. But you know he's going to be out there chucking. You want guys chucking for your dollar, and he's one of the better three-point shooters in the league over the course of the last few seasons. So just got to look at that number and kind of click on it if it ends up being 12.5 or 13.5 with standard juice, of course. So Indiana money line, that's a lean. Buddy healed 13.5 points. That's a prop that's on my radar here, but ladder for Tyrese Halliburton. Also, whoever that was throwing that out there the other day, that was a lean, something I was talking through. The number opened insane, insane. Now, Tyrese Halliburton is absolutely living up to it here at this given point in time. Ten assists here with four minutes left in the game, but still not going to be exceeding props, targeting ladders. It's going to be really hard to get to anything here on this side of the ball. Outside, outside, perhaps, perhaps, of our guy, buddy. Here. Bet365, my friends, bet five, get 150 in bonus bets when you sign up at the link below. It's only available in six states, coming to Louisiana soon, though. Just throwing it out there, but... Not supposed to be saying that. Doesn't matter. Kentucky, Virginia, New Jersey, Ohio, Colorado, Iowa. My friends, six states where you can bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets. The most you could be out is $5 here, period. You're going to get $155 of ammunition in the process. So, again, Bet365, one of the more world-renowned sports books, well-known internationally. Take advantage of these offers when they show up. You need to get yourself involved with these offers when they show up. This is how you build and sustain a bankroll. So take advantage right now, my friends. Only for 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. In our final game of the night, two teams we didn't see here on Wednesday, haven't seen since Monday. It's been a minute. But I am so confused by this line. I really, really am. The Atlanta Hawks taking on the Orlando Magic. We know that the Magic, they've had some injuries here of late, particularly Wendell Carter Jr. That's going to be a piece that, well, he's not going to be playing basketball for a little while. Broken finger. That's a problem. We haven't seen Markel Fultz in a minute. Probably not going to be in here for this basketball game either. You see a very dinged up uh, Magic squad. Jonathan Isaac ends up sitting on that Monday. Give him a little extra rest, which I kind of like. That's that's a guy that you're going to want eventually back into the mix. But Markel Fultz, that is kind of your main question mark here. He is questionable and everybody on the Atlanta side looks to be good to go. I don't know. Chris Middleton probably going to be back for the Milwaukee one. I should have talked about that a little bit earlier. He was inactive on Wednesday. He was never going to play on a back-to-back throwing it out there, but wanted to cover my bases there. But as we look at the board here for Atlanta, Orlando, you know that Trey Young, you know that DeJounte Murray, they're going to go out and do what they do to try to keep this game competitive. And yet they're three-point favorites, so why wouldn't it be competitive, right? Well, Orlando's 5-2, and two, and it's a team that we've backed quite a bit here on this program because one Paulo Bancaro is confirmed hashtag good at basketball. Franz Wagner, also phenomenal, a wing player that you definitely want to get yourself, uh, jump on the bandwagon if you aren't there already. And Atlanta does have some pieces like Jalen Johnson, who I just rave over. He hasn't been great from three here, shooting 32% on the season, but he is so good on the interior, a motor guy, and I just... 
overall like the play quite a bit. Anthony Black will probably be enacted into a ton of duty if Markel Fultz is out yet again. Kind of got himself a rotation spot maybe in the future anyway. 30 and 33 minutes, doing a decent job of getting this offense started outside of the Dallas game where, well, they just got completely lapped. It is what it is. But Orlando, I find them to be top to bottom a little bit more talented than that of Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta has DeJounte Murray, Trey Young, Clint Capella, who's been around for absolutely ever. Jalen Johnson, who I've talked about. Bogdanovich does have some ammunition off the bench, but I'm so in love with Paulo Bancaro and this Orlando team at just being able to do specific things, such as create offense for each other. Markel Fultz would be awesome to get back into the wings here for this one. Let's see this maybe move a half point. What's he worth? Half a point? A point? That's not really the point. The point is that you should be locking Orlando getting the points. Plus three, my friends, put it in the bank. With Apollo Bancaro lean towards the double-double, you'd probably want to see that double-double enacted in the event that, like, you just have to play more minutes. He's going to see more rebounding opportunities. I know only he only had five against Dallas there last time out. But with Wendell Carter on the shelf, Goga Patatze starting, Mo Wagner, I don't know. I could see some small ball lineups against a team like Atlanta, depending on what they want to do. I do think they have more of a true center rotation going Capella to Kongwu. Maybe not the best opportunity, but if the number is right, if we're talking north of plus 250 kind of number here on a Bancaro double-double, I could be entertained. I could be entertained. Plus, you have the backdoor assist opportunity, which we ran into, what, two games ago there for him. So have it on your radar, but the priority, the only priority so far on this two-gamer, Orlando, plus three, lock it up, move on with your day. And that does it for another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist here on Thursday Slate. Again, just two games. We're going to have some NFL goodness going on in the premium Discord. Hey, we just hit 100,000 subs here on the Odd Chopper channel as well. Phenomenal stuff. Thank you to everybody for uh, subscribing, for checking out my videos and everybody's videos here on the channel. We're working hard for you, trying to put out the best content we possibly can. And hey, it's about hitting some winners in the process. So hopefully... Well, we'll see how it ends up panning out here as we finish up. But I will be back on Friday. Until then, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Thursday.